everybody. So, here to give you guys, uh, again, I don't know, I'll title it as both. Y'all let me know if this should be a tabloid trending topics with T or just a let's talk. But I do want y'all to talk back, whether it be in the comment section or if you want to do a video, almost like a tag. I'll link the video down below. If I forget, please let me know. All right, because I'm doing a whole lot. And again, I'm doing this off of one device to another. So if I happen to forget, please, please, please let me know. All right. So I think it was like two months ago, Hazel Lee uh, was on Hollywood Unlocked with um, Jason Lee, Melissa Ford, and another gentleman. Don't know his name. No shade. I just don't know who he is. And <clears throat> Hazel Lee was, uh, you know, the guest and immediately um, you have uh, Jason mentioning all of the uh, history that is in the room more or less him throwing the drink on Hazel and touching not even touching but just mentioning that there was something between Melissa and her so we finally get to, now the whole entire time <clears throat> now Melissa and Hazel fell out years ago so the whole entire time Melissa ain't saying shit Melissa just <laughs> just sitting there and because they were recording it they're not looking at Melissa because it's Melissa the other guy and then you have Hazel and Jason so either you get those two in one shot or a pan between the two the other guy you can tell that he wanted to you know have some time because he would find a way to inject himself in the conversation. Trust me when I say <laughs> Melissa like this, like, mm -hmm. like that was <laughs> Melissa the whole entire time. It was one of those, but she didn't want to be bothered. Now, I saw comments right then just saying that <clears throat> she needed to say something. Like, why would you, you know, be there and not say anything? Well, here's the reality. I'll get to the uh, issue between them in a minute, but I can respect the fact that she didn't say anything because it's one of those where if I don't have anything to contribute, I'm not going to just sit here and make noise just to be there. I ain't got anything to contribute, so I'm going to just sit here and I'm going to just chill. Plus, there was nothing for her to say. So that's my whole thing. So then when it came to those two, Melissa did some shit that I would do, which is like, you know what? I'm gonna let Hazel tell her um, version of events, and then I'll tell mine. Where it's just like, I'm gonna let you sit here and give you the opportunity to see, to <clears throat> tell everything that happened. And if you don't, then I'll come back and I'll actually give y'all what it is, and I can appreciate that because again, you know they always say there's three sides to a story. Your side, their side, in the middle is the truth. So <clears throat> Hazel literally just glossed over it. And I don't even really care to recall what she said she glossed over it. But again, I'll try to link it with the timing of when it initially started. But then you have Melissa go. Now from Melissa's standpoint, they um, <clears throat> met up and they you know hit it off and became good friends and there was a point that cause i think she i think melissa was living in new york she decided that she wanted to give uh la a um you know hollywood would give that a um chance so she was going to move in with hazel so they did the whole roommate thing now before then good good friends shared everything whatnot the fact that they're now living together, it's like, okay, we can't be consumed with each other 24-7. So she had to, you know, kind of like section off and, you know, like make sure that was that divide between them, whether, you know, they were still friends, but, you know, they're living with each other. And if y'all ever lived with somebody, you understand that you don't want lines to get blurred to a point where there's animosity and whatnot. You just don't want that to happen. So... I can understand it. And then she started to see that things were going a little bit left. So she decided, you know what? To salvage the friendship, I'll leave. And she left. 
And it was at that point that Hazel got pissed. So what Hazel decided to do, and I think um, Melissa said from like 9 in the morning to like midnight, so over 12 hours, Hazel Lee and two other females began dragging her on Twitter. Because IG wasn't a thing then. Twitter. Dragging her. And coming up with all type of, uh, you know, lies and just everything saying that, you know, her, you know, pussy been worn out. That, um, you know, every person in the different leagues that had a chance at it, just like going in. And she used the statement or she used the basis that they live together as a, you know, to kind of not necessarily solidify, but to kind of like back up these lies to make these lies seem genuine. And that like that really, really fucked up her head where it's just like, damn, like I was cool with you. And then, you know, I leave to salvage the friendship and rather than talk to me, you team up with two other bitches, then y'all just sit here and y'all just drag me on Twitter. And it was mentioned and you can hear the hurt. You really could. And you can see Hazel trying to defend herself. Now here's the thing. Yes, you can defend yourself, but you did wrong. You did wrong. She's trying to say, oh, well, you know, that was during the time where, you know, IG and stuff wasn't popping. She was like, but Twitter was popping. You know, this this wasn't one of those where if news broke, there was still time to go through and do damage control. Like, it was out there and people knew. And that fucked with her, her paper, and everything else. So then Hayes was just like, oh, well, you know, I was, I, I'm the same, you know, person then that I was, that I am now, where... I have that reach and that influence of where you do me wrong, I can sit here and I can make that shit go public. And she can still do that now. And it's like, you're still not owning up to it. And then when um, Melissa mentioned her and two other girls, she was like, oh, what were their names? You, It was one of those just like, you could simply, and it, this was one of those where she could just be like, you know what? Shit happened. I was in my feelings. Rather than be a woman about it, I decided to be real child. Because I don't even want to call this petty. I don't even want to call it petty. That was just childhood. But, you know, she could just say, I did this. You know, there is no explanation for why I did what I did. I'm sorry. And could have left it at that. But she didn't. And it just seemed as if she was trying to find every which reason to try to, you know, like balance this out. Even saying like, oh, well, you know, you left and you took this. And it's just like, all right, you reaching. You seriously reaching. And Jason even made mention that all three of them were, I think, at a Floyd Mayweather event where I think they all were being compensated for it. And they were able to get along and Melissa made it very clear. I ain't feel like no motherfucker stop my money. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get this bag. So I can coexist with you, Jess. Like, they're coexisting right now. She has a job to do. That does not necessarily mean that she has to go out of her way to communicate with her. And Hazel wanted to have a sit down, a kumbaya. And M Melissa, bad to me, I wouldn't have did it. But she did it because she was trying to make sure that there was not going to be any blow up. Because she don't want that fucker with her bottom, you know, her bottom line. Got it. And that's pretty much it. But you can tell that Melissa is hurt. Now, you have a lot of people that are on the fence saying that she should get over it. Talk about Melissa. And you have others saying that, you know, hey, I feel. But you also have to take into account this was two months ago. Before the big blow up with what happened with Hazel. And Rose Burgundy, love hip hop, just hilarious, all them. So here's what I'm gonna say. I feel Melissa. I'm team Melissa the entire way. Now, this is when I'm finna sit here, I'm finna go on my soapbox, grab a whole lot. I'm finna sit here and take y'all through my life a little bit to tell you why. When I was younger, uh, like I said, I, I, I did not have a relationship with my father's side of the family. I think like after his mother passed when I was three. I didn't see my family again until we got reconnected years later. 
So <clears throat> there was a point that I would always go to my father's house every weekend. So I, I would get out of school, go home, change, pack my bag, because I didn't already have a pack, get on the bus, and then I, eventually I figured out there was a train that would get me there faster, but I would travel. I had a key. I would stay there the weekend. Well, he introduced me to his sister. I ain't going to put a name out there, but introduced me to her. And I was just like, all right, cool. And it worked because rather than just being in the house and waiting for him to get there, I would go hang out with my aunt, you know, and I was trying to build that relationship. And I, and you know, I believe in starting out and being honest. So, you know, I was open up about shit that was going on at home, all the craziness and whatnot, you know, because again, it's my father's sister. You know, why should I, you, uh, me being naive now, why should I not be able to sit here and just open up? Why I do that? Because not only did she go back and tell my business to the rest of, of that side of the family, she only told two to five percent of the truth. The rest of it was all fabricated lies, and it got back to me being my father. And my father, like, with the fuck off on me, just like, why the fuck you running your mouth? This, that, a third. And I'm like, damn. Like, I'm sitting here, like, damn, for you to be my relative, you sure as hell doing me grimy, grimy, like my mama's side of the family. You know, and I'm just like, all right, cool, bet. And it was, it was where incidents like that where trust is violated. It, like I said, I already have a wall up in general, but it's like the thickness of that wall becomes even more thick and makes it harder to break down that wall where I'm to the point now where, yeah, I can come off as a very cold fucking person where getting to know me is difficult because it's just like, well, damn, like, what are your intentions? Because I'm an open book, but you have a lot of people that want to get to know you just so they can sit here and run back and tell some other shit because they have no substance in their fucking lives. And I'm going to keep it all the way 100 with you. That particular aunt, I don't even fuck with <laughs> She, Shit, I come around the family when I go over there. She talked to me, I look at her, I get her that, why the fuck you talking to me? Look, and I continue doing what the fuck I'm doing. It ain't shit to say to you. Because again, the way you did me was real grimy, real foul. You feel what I'm saying? Shit, Facebook, <laughs> she didn't try to send me a friend request on Facebook. Dina, <laughs> she did it several times. Dina, it ain't that, mm -mm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not doing it. Cause you only got but so many. You like, I'm not gonna sit and give you more than one opportunity. I I hate to say it, I'm a one and done type of cat. You feel what I'm saying? There are instances where I may give you a second chance. But when I say I, I I'm watching you like a hawk, it's to the point where random people arms length. The moment you burn me like that, country distance. And when I say country, I mean like motherfucker live one to two miles down that type of distance like you ain't getting close never the fuck again and it's at the point now where I don't really let people get that close like I share a lot on you know uh, YouTube but that stuff where it's just like eh, I really don't care but there's other stuff that I do safeguard because it's just like I don't need air, like more or less intricate stuff I'm not gonna share but I say all this to say what Halo did to her was Bodine and a motherfucker and the fact that not only do you lie but you try to use the fact that we live together to substantiate these lies that you are telling and you were unremorseful for this and even now it seems like you ain't oh hell no hell no I keep it all 100 with you it's, it's like I have family members now on both sides I don't talk to I don't fuck with it's just that fucking simple and I'm at that point in my life now where if there's going to be a relationship, they need to work on it. And there's a handful. Ain't no relationship. Ain't no relationship just because we related don't mean we family. Point blank in the fucking period. Because you're not going to do me wrong and think that I'm going to get the fuck over it. Maybe that's Capricorn in me. Maybe that's just, you know, me being a hurt person and not want to let people in. It is what the fuck it is. But again, I understand Melissa, and with the whole business thing, not letting somebody, you know, fuck up the paper, it's been plenty of motherfuckers with what I do that I work with that I don't fucking like where if it was a different situation, we would have been fault. So, and again, by virtue of my position, it's been people where 
if you didn't know we didn't like each other, you would never tell. Because again, I'm a professional. But once I'm off the clock, <laughs> don't say shit to me. It was one cat re was like really trying to see him be like friends with me and shit. And I'm looking like, no, nigga, like, do you not realize the way you get that fuck up face? Like, no, no. But when we at work, we have a job to do. I'm not feeling like how I feel about you. Mess with my bottom line. And that is Melissa. So with everything I understood it, I don't think she should get over it. Hell, when it comes to forgiveness, I mean, more often than not, it'd take me a minute, but I'm a forgive a person, but you bet I'm never gonna fucking forget. I'm never gonna let it go. I ain't that dude. Because I'm never gonna give you the opportunity to sit here and hurt me again. Cause again, you know the saying goes, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. It ain't finna be a second time. And if I can help it, it ain't finna be a first fucking time. So, that's how I feel about it. That whole entire situation. Again, I'm gonna try to leave the video down below. Y'all watch it and y'all let me know. Do y'all think Melissa should get over it? Do you think that she's justified? Or do you think that in light of what has happened with Hazel Lee, do you think that is influencing how you feel about it? So, y'all let me know. Whether you comment down below or you do a video about it. And if you do a video about it, like, like let me know. And I'll go check it out. So, thank you for watching. See you guys later. Peace.